What's happening, YouTube? I hope you're having a fantastic day. I'm having a great day. Why? Because we're talking plants, that's why. All right. I feel like I haven't got to do plants in months. Uh, past few videos are either maintenance or equipment. So my favorite part of the hobby is plants. So good news. Bucephalandra is now available at PetSmart by Top Fin, this company. Uh, no, they did not ask me to do this video today. Uh, here's my receipt to prove it. I am a genuine customer, and I have been of uh, PetSmart and Petco since the very beginning, and that's because when I first started, I noticed aquarium plants for the first time at PetSmart and Petco. I, you know, I, I didn't start realizing that there were actually online retailers that do uh, aquarium plants that they can ship them to you. And the closest local fish store to me that has them besides the chain stores uh, is an hour and a half from me. So if I want to do a plant like right then, I'm going to go to PetSmart and buy their plants. And they're great plants. Uh, they're great beginner plants. They're very easy uh, to learn from starting off. And that's how I started. Uh, if you will come across YouTubers that I have listened to, and I'm not going to call them out, but have said that all plants at PetSmart and Petco die. You know, some have said only the only ones that survive are ferns. All right, now these are inexperienced uh, uh, YouTubers dealing with these aquatic plants because some of them did start by getting them from nurseries that grew plants underwater, and those can tend to be a, a little bit easier if your water is close to theirs. But when it comes to tissue cultured plants or any plants that you get in the tubes that they were growing immersed, not underwater, they're gonna go through a transition. No plants are an exception. All plants must adapt to their new environment. And the way that they do that is by shedding all their leaves and growing new ones. The reason why the leaves go is because those are the one, th that's what's responsible for all the photosynthesizing. So. If it can't do it in its new environment, it's going to lose its leaves and grow new ones that are adjusted to it. And that some plants, that process takes a very long time. And Bucephalandra being one of them and other rhizome plants like uh, Anubias uh, or Java ferns, it can take months. They may lose one leaf, you know, every couple weeks and are growing back new ones. And once they've done that, they are fully committed to underwater growth at that point. Now... A tip I can tell you, if you want to know, because sometimes a plant will genuinely just die. You didn't do anything wrong. It just didn't appreciate being moved because no plants do. Um, and sometimes you will have plants that just full-blown die on you. With rhizome plants, these are plants that you don't plant into the substrate like Anuvius, Java ferns, and Bucephalandra. These attach to something. Now, if it's losing all its leaves and you're like, want to know if it's actually dying or if it's just doing going through the motions of readjusting uh, feel its uh, rhizome if its rhizome has gone soft on you it's it's got got rot it's it's crumbing out on you so we're gonna open this I'm gonna show you how to clean it and I'm gonna show you uh, uh, I'm gonna give you a couple tips that will give you the best success with this because uh, these are most popular in nano tanks co2 tanks but that doesn't mean that they have to stick to small aquariums. I do uh, non-CO2, low-tech, uh, large planet tanks. And uh, I did a couple of years ago, my son and I did a nanoscape where we did Bucephalandra right here on a uh, you know dead bonsai tree. Uh, so we put it on there and it's been there for a couple of years and it did have some that was ready to be propagated. I'm going to move it. My two favorite places to put these small types of plants. Uh, Boost, in my opinion, looks great on either the bonsai tree or in Dragonstone. And the re and here's a picture of Dragonstone. The re and you can buy Dragonstone. Now it's available at hardware stores like Home Depot. But I, I think they you have to buy it in minimums of like 50 pounds. So it's a lot. But you can get it at PetSmart and also order it online. What I love about, Drift, uh, about Dragonstone is that it has all these craters in there. Now those Little craters, for me, I find them perfect to slip these little rhizome plants right into there, and I don't have to use any glue or wire or string to attach them. So when I'm getting ready to attach this, I'll show you the piece of dragonstone that I'd like to cover with it. Um, 
this plant grows extremely slow. This like, one in particular, Boost Brownie, is the most popular, and it being ten dollars for a row of these uh, is pretty average. So, uh, gonna make a little cut, show you the cleanup, and then I'll show you how to propagate whenever it is ready to be uh, propagated. Unfortunately, I had some, so we'll go from there. Un momento, por favor. All right, so let's get to the cleanup of this. Uh, if you've never done tissue culture plants before, this is a, uh, it's a gel uh, called agar, and it keeps everything nice and moist in these uh, packages. Uh, so a couple things, you know, yep, you'll need some scissors, and no, they don't have to be aquarium scissors. You can use regular scissors. Anyway, uh, to get these going, you're going to want to grab a little cup of water, and the water I suggest putting in there is water from the tank that it's going in. So if you're starting to pre-acclimate it, because yeah, we're gonna have to soak these for a little bit. Obviously keep your hands clean. That should go without saying, but you know, you never know. All right, so I'm plucking this stuff out, and as you'll see, it's still got clumps of agar all over the roots. I'm just dropping it into the cup of water here. This is a very small, delicate plant um, and I'm not going to sit here squeezing agar off of it. So what I'm going to do is the cup of tank water it's going in. I have, it came with three, which is awesome. I got three plants. I'm going to let it soak for a little bit so that agar can start to dissolve. Uh, and then when it's all dissolved and it's off of there, I'll show you what to do from there. Ho, ho, hola, we're back. How to uh, propagate a uh, boost of phalanger after you've had one for a uh, couple years. Yes, you're not going to want to mess with this propagating these tiny uh, plants for several years. It takes them a long time before they get to the point of propagation. And when you do get to that point, uh, they are fully converted to underwater growth. Keep a spray bottle of uh, water. Keep them moist. It only takes uh, plants about 10 minutes before they start wilting on you outside of the water. So the way I'm going to show you my little diagram here. The way Busa Philandra grows and propagates, so here's the Busa Philandra. Here's all its leaves. When it's starting to multiply, it will grow new sections that look like little tiny trees coming off of it like this, with leaves coming off of it that look just like that one. And it can do it over and over and over in sections. And to propagate, you would just snip between them. Well, all right. Awesome. While I was trying to find a, a good uh, propagating boost, uh, a branch broke off my bonsai tree. So let's take a close look at this. Look at the boost. Now here is the original one. And this is a new one that's growing from the front. And then you can also see a tiny one that started to sprout down this way. You see? So it's multiplying. So I can snip this one off and even this tiny one if I wanted to. And that one's ready to go. And I am ready to uh, take some of this. There we go. And voila! A boost from a boost. All right. Okay, so that's it on the propagating. All right, here we are again. Okay, so the cleanup for the new baby Busa Philandra. There is a, now that the agar has dissolved, there is a step we do want to take first before we plant it. And that being is we want to check for a few things uh, around the entire plant. So first, go through and start feeling your roots. If any of them are, are soggy or mushy, it's that one root's got root rot, and to fix it, you snip it off. Now, besides that, what we want to do is, because this is going to have to adjust to its new aquatic life. It's never been underwater before, uh, and so to help it with its acclimating, we are going to trim the tips of these roots. The reason we do that is because uh, Trimming or pruning, whether it be roots or the leaves, does encourage rapid new growth. And we're going to need that new growth because that new growth is going to be uh, growing in a submerged state. So everything 
as it's continuing to grow from this point will be fully converted to that. So if you've stuck with me this far, I, I really appreciate it. I can tell you right now that my videos do tend to run 10 minutes or longer. And that's because if you're going to learn something new, it can't be explained to you in full depth detail in a three minute video on YouTube. If you truly want to understand how to do a plant all the way from beginning to end, you know, it's a process. So uh, let's go to placement. Where's the best place to put it? And we'll go from there. So welcome back. Now placement for your Busa Philandra. This is especially important for your newly purchased boost that has not been underwater, is you want to get your plant as close to the surface as possible. These small plants, the deeper you put them, the slower they're going to grow. And the reason for that being is because they're not capable of getting tall enough to get to the surface of your tank. The reason they want to be closer to the surface of the tank is because there's a higher gas exchange happening at the surface and they they have access to more co2 the lower the deeper you get in your aquarium the less co2 that's happening uh so these uh nano plants uh will appreciate being closer to the surface now that's for these new ones the ones that i already have converted i can put those lower and uh let's speed things up and see how full i can get this uh dragon stone here in the dark so as you can see the sun's no longer in my face in this basement there's one window up high and it was shining in my face now it's like hours later uh and it's now evening so what was a you know 12 minute video for you was eight hours of joy for me all right uh so to put a price on how much it would have cost me to cover the dragon stone if i had none uh fortunately i was able to propagate uh, 13 clippings off of my boost uh, that was a couple years old and the three I got that would have come out to roughly five packages so 50 bucks uh, if I had to start from scratch um, so I got a jump start on covering that dragon stone and in a couple years there'll be a you know a bush of it uh, growing all the way around it so I and that's a 40 gallon tank where I dispersed uh, nano plants, and I think it really elevated the Dragonstone. Uh, sorry for all the glares here, but anyway, thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoyed it, please subscribe, hit the like button, share it, do whatever, or don't, uh, and we'll catch you next time, and remember, if you're having a bad day and you're down in the dumps, the feeling will pass. So you can wait on that or you can get up and do something about it. Thanks again. We'll catch you next time.